workflow workspace right now and I've brought in one of the avatars Fifi um, and I've added my custom measurements to it so this is basically to make something for myself but you can obviously do this um, if you go to avatar editor up here at the main menu and open up their measurements you can plug in your own and then even save that to use later on just to quickly do it instead of having to change the measurements every time right so I want to yeah. make a bathing suit that is a delicate one piece um, with some small straps that are gonna go to a really low back as low as I can get it um, the other thing that I need to do before I start designing is um, get this pose in a better position so this is also a custom pose for swim and it's basically just this A pose so not a T where they have their their legs close together um, you'll see if you start designing swimwear that when you get to this bottom area at the crotch it really bunches up in the creases of the leg so as much as you can get within reason is good for this the other thing is the fabric so I have a, a fabric that after doing some research I came upon this that I made in Clo. so it's a ribbed nylon spandex so it has a lot of stretch it's a nice thick swimwear fabric and I've added the parameters that I need to try to emulate this as best as possible so I've added this to my object browser and that's what I'll be using to create this swimwear we have our polygon tool, just the regular one that's going to let us do some irregular shapes and custom shapes instead of the rectangle or ellipse. Let's zoom into our avatar silhouette in the 2D window. So I want a nice um, sort of V-neck shape. And I'm going to get this general shape built but then I'll probably have a lot of reshaping once I simulate and see how the fabric acts and um, assess it from there. The front of the crotch I want to be much longer so that that seam connecting the front and the back is going to be rolled towards the back. And again, the crotch area is really problematic when you are trying to simulate this on the avatar so for visual purposes the crotch has to be super small but when um, you're going to print out your patterns later on you'll need to adjust this a little bit for real world production a good thing to do is look at a suit in something that you have if you have a swimsuit that fits you well look at how the POMs the points of measure on that suit look at what they are Okay, we have some extra fabric right here for coverage, yeah, and I just sort of like this shape. It gives me a 70s retro feel if I have this curve. I also want to do that over here. So instead of going all the way to my um, tool bar, I'm going to hold Option with my regular Edit tool, and it switches to this Edit Curvature tool. So I'm holding Option, and I can click on that segment and just drag to edit this curve. I just want a subtle curve because um, this coverage helps, but it also doesn't really look too curved once it's on. It's just giving us a little more modesty. This is fine. I'm going to want to smooth that out, so I'm going to grab the Smooth Curve tool, just click on that point and drag to smooth that out a little bit. And let's go ahead and unfold this so back to my edit pattern tool right click on that center front segment unfold with symmetric editing so now we have a front if we make an edit to one side it will be applied to the other which is great I'm going to select this whole thing after pressing my a key which gives me my transform pattern tool so hotkey a and command C command V will just copy and paste for my back the reason why I do this and pretty much with any most patterns that I make I will start my back from the front 
and that gives you um, the same curve for your side seam or your out seam, the same length, um, and you just make edits from there. So remember what I was saying about the style of this. I want this to be a really low back. So if this comes to um, the side seam comes to this height right here, I would need to start my shape at this other point right here. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to go back to my edit pattern tool, hotkey Z, and I'm going to bring this down a little bit. So I have a lower area to start from when we start transitioning from the front to the back. So let's tweak this real quick and just give myself a new back. So that means we have a lower start position to bring this curve in. I'm going to go ahead and delete this bring this way down. I don't want to delete that center segment or segment point yet because that will take away my symmetric editing. But I'm going to try to get this really low, really as low as I can. And then I'll curve this in again with holding option down. And with the back side of a swimsuit, whether it's a one piece or a bikini if you want it to be really cheeky that meaning that the butt cheeks are completely hanging out then you can keep it relatively close to the front but normally you're going to have the complete opposite shape so you're going to have this strange sort of um we're going to have to add some more points in here so hotkey x and that will give you your add point tool. I'm just going to add a couple right here so we can start bringing this out. Back to my edit pattern tool, hotkey Z. And we need a shape that comes, it gives us a proper transition to our front crotch area. Same as right here. So I need to bring this area in while this remains out. I need to have a bezier handle coming from this point early. Let's try deleting all the curve points and then starting again. There we go. So I sort of just reset it by right clicking on it and deleting the curve points and then going back in by holding option with my edit pattern tool and editing that curvature. So this is going to give us the start to sort of simulate and see how that transition from the front out seam to the back, that shape right here that's going to go around our profile of the leg. And this is a little bit too dramatic, but not too far off. We can start with this and see what it looks like. And this is a little bit too... So if you know about sewing at all, the reason why I am trying to square off these certain areas like this crotch seam and the out seam right here, I'm trying to make it as square as possible or otherwise you want it to be a continuation from the front. So if you imagine this out seam being sewn together, what this shape is going to look like is determined by the angles that these two segments come together at. Okay, so it looks a little big for um, a suit, but it might might just be fine. See, the, the one thing about this, I might need a little bit more space for the bust area. The one thing about this is um, 
because I want this really delicate style, right? I um, I need to not have a lot of strain on the fabric. Like it's not going to be a super tight fitting. The spandex or the nylon spandex will have to stretch a bit, obviously, but um, I don't want it to have a huge amount of stretch happening, a lot of tension, so it's not creating a lot of wear on the, the delicate straps that I want. So that is why I need to make it just a little bit smaller than what it would need for a standard fabric helps to delete any extra points and before I would print out this pattern if I was happy with my simulation I would go around and convert all of these to curve points you don't want to just straight up delete them like that because it takes away your shaping but you would say right click and um, convert to curve point and it would go away okay let's start with this shape and see what it gives us even though we don't have our straps maybe we can do that really quick so i'm going to grab the rectangle tool and because this is let's get our arrangement points shift f and i can get both of these out of the way for two seconds which allows us to place them and while that piece is still selected i can go in my property editor and i can change the offset all the way down at the bottom of your property editor, the bigger the number and the offset, the bigger the curvature. I need my strap to go from here around the shoulder and I'm going to crisscross in the back and what I don't want to do is attach that strap to an area that is below this smallest point. So the natural waist where the back sort of curves inward and then comes back out. Once I pass that level right here, that's going to create this um, sort of negative space between the strap and the body. And I want the strap to hug the body. So I'm going to come to an area that's far over here and hopefully it will behave like like we would expect so having said that I need a strap that is going to be uh, likely pretty long maybe 20 inches even though we're gonna get a um, pretty good amount of stretch going on in it so back to the rectangle tool and this is going to be we can't really do quarter inch but we can do a 3 8 finish. So the width is going to be 3 8 which means that is 0 0 0.3625 0 0.3625 I think. Let's just go with 0 0.362 that is close enough and we're gonna go with 20 inches to start. Let's do a symmetric pattern okay and we want to do not this rib fabric but let's just do a standard nylon spandex so I can select both of these now and hit my assign button over my object browser to apply that fabric I'll close this library up and I'm not going to do white on orange but I want to go for that retro feel so a nice um, deep brown like chocolatey color instead of um, or to go with that rusty penny orange so let's try that it might be a little bit dark but sure obviously we can always change that later right once you have your fabric selected over in your object browser you can go into the property editor change the um, color of it change all of the physical properties of it and the details right here but so this is a preset fabric so we're pretty good these have all been professionally tested as far as stretch and toughness and durability all that 
let's start stitching this together so we can simulate. So I just grabbed my free sewing tool right here. And because these are symmetric patterns, it does both sides at once. So I'll do one and it does the other for me. Now with this, okay, really quick, I want to get this center elastic piece in there so I can connect these two straps to it. Let's see how long our segment is. So by getting my edit pattern tool and clicking on that segment, it shows us the dimension, which is 5.36. I don't want to create a lot of gathering, so typically you always use a shorter dimension of your elastic pieces when you're binding a swimsuit edge with elastic, right? Um, but I only want to do this very subtly so it doesn't create a lot of gathers. So if we have five and about a third of an inch, maybe we just take off that third and go with five inches. So five on the double is going to give us 10 inches. So we need a pattern that is, um, and if you didn't know this, when you have your rectangle polygon tool, you can left click in the background of your 2D window and it gives you this dialog box to type in your specific dimensions that you need. So the width again, because we're making a elastic binding strap, is going to be that point 0.362 because we're doing 3 eighths. And the height or length in this case is going to be 10 inches. Okay, and that will be our center piece right here. So let's get this situated to how we're actually going to be using it. But I'm going to get my add point tool, that's hotkey X, and it really, it does it for you, like you, it'll click into the center right here, um, or you can right click with that add point tool and you'll get this split line box, which I just want to be in the center, so I'm going to click uniform split and hit OK. And now I can free sew this onto both sides and it's equally distributed. Remember that when you're sewing, when you're stitching things together, you have to go in the same direction. So you tell the program how the sewing relation goes together. And that blue dot appears because it's recommending that I stop there if I want my sewing relation to be equal on both sides. but. I do have some ease in here. I'm trying to ease this little bit longer um, shape of the suit, the body of the suit, with the binding. So I'm going to surpass that blue line and go right to the center point. Same with this over here. I'm going in the same direction that I want it to sew together. Now that I have this tiny piece right here, I'm not going to try to arrange it with gizmo or the arrangement points, I'm going to select it and then right click on it and say superimpose side and that will put it right next to each other. So we're going to have a little bit extra right here and we want to just split this in half. So I'll first get my internal line tool, which is hotkey G. And I'm just going to bring a line all the way up, go back to my edit pattern tool, right click on that internal line we just made and say cut and sew. Now it's going to automatically sew that together for us, but because it's separate now, I can shape it a little bit. So I want this V shape so we don't have this extra little fold of fabric. Now I can stitch this to the edge of this and probably what would be helpful right now because we're not fully intact with all of our binding and everything I'm just going to tack this to the avatar so it doesn't get super crazy when we simulate so now those will stay in that area same with this we can although this is a little bit high so let's grab our transform pattern tool. Let's move this a little bit closer. 
So we can see how this is going to fall on the body more accurately. Now we can sew, let's see, are we on the right? No, we're opposite. So while these are both selected, I can right click on them and say reset 2D arrangement and it just switched them so that the 2D window is the same as my 3D window. Now we have the right pieces, so I can stitch this with this. And in real world production, this would all be one piece of binding, but it's gonna be much easier to um, arrange it and get our visual representation if we have them split up for a second. And I don't know about you, but I prefer this type of gizmo. So I think you have a lot more control and um, you can manipulate the pieces a lot more easily. And if you have the default one, you can just right click anywhere on the background of your 3D window and go to gizmo and pick up that local coordinate. And that will give you the same type of gizmo. Okay. So we want to stitch these to the back here now, and I'm going to grab the free sewing tool. We want these to crisscross though, so this guy is going to go over here, and this guy is going to go over here. Um, I can do this in the 3D window if I want. Sometimes it is a little bit janky. Okay, let's do it in this window then. And we have to think about it opposite because these are crisscrossing and it's going toward the back. So we went from outside to inside. Now we have to go from inside to outside. And that went ahead and did the other one for us, so that's great. The last seam that needs to be stitched up is the crotch seam, so we can stitch that really quickly. And simulate, see how it looks, so far at least. Okay, not terrible. Let's let go of those tacks that we have on the avatar just by right clicking so I'm going to my edit tack tool over here that's right above the tack on avatar tool remember when you long hold this tack tool over here you can tack through um, fabric to fabric or you can tack onto an avatar so meaning your fabric gets tacked to the avatar but right above it is the edit tack tool and so you can go back and right click on any of your tacks and just say delete Okay, now that those are gone, let's simulate again and see what happens. Okay, not too bad. I don't mind that. We even have a decent um, transition at the top of our side seam from front to back. This can be a little bit higher. This can be a little bit lower. And see how skinny that crotch of the front is? Even with that small little area, it's still doing some strange, like, folding over. And we also have this A pose, so you can imagine what happens when we have a normal pose. So I'm going to stop simulation and make some of these adjustments now. This gaping right here at the top of the bust area, that will be controlled maybe with a little bit of shaping, but mostly with some added elastic pieces. So we'll add some more of this. We're basically going to bind all of the edges with this brown 3 8 elastic so all around the leg and this curve in the back. Okay, so back to my edit pattern tool, I'm going to lower this back a little bit. That might be a little too much. And we can shape that a little more. 
So these both need to come up. So I'm going to select them at the same time. This looks like a little bit too much. Now we don't have our, um, well, a couple of things. We don't have the particle distance lowered, which we need to do that right now for those tiny straps especially. Um, but we also don't have the collision thickness and the skin offset changed, so we're not getting a fully accurate representation of the fit of this yet. But however, before we do that, because it really slows down the processing, we can get a little bit closer in shape and fit of how we want. So let me simulate again really quickly. And that is creating a little bit too much excess right there. So I'm hitting the space bar to simulate and turn off simulation or you can click this arrow, but using your keys, your hotkeys, it's really, really helpful, um, especially if you want to do quick simulation where you just have a minor change and then stop the simulation. It does help the workflow in general, just speeds things up when you use your hotkeys on the board. I think we can change the position of these straps to be a little bit lower, about right here-ish, and we'll still be fine. We won't be passing this small of the back. So let's get our Edit Sewing Tool, and I'm just going to click on this sewing relation here, and all I have to do is drag it down a little bit. And I'm not dragging one of the points, I'm dragging um, the entire segment of that sewing relation. I'm not dragging this blue point, I'm dragging in the center of it so it doesn't change the length. Okay, so getting closer. That needs a lot of help right here to cup around the body. I'm thinking we might need like a little bit of, let's stop simulation, and then go to my edit pattern tool. And I just want to redirect this neckline shape a little bit. Remember, I'm thinking slinky, delicate. It looks like it's feather light and just very refined. That's the style that I'm going for. So it's understated. It's not going to be like super strappy and showy and super sex appeal. We're just going for a solid design. Okay, I'm going to stick with the height of this leg opening and I'm going to stick with the coverage of this back area. Although we could probably balance it out by bringing it a little bit like this. I just want to build in this shape right here so it has like a nice smooth transition which means I want to bring this down, but I want to make this shape more like this. And I'm going to bring this down. Okay, that's pretty okay for right now. So now let's figure out what we need as far as the rest of the binding because we want to get this all cinched in closer to the body. It's going to give everything some good stabilized edges. Edit pattern tool. I'm going to click on this segment. We have 13.75. So remember we're being we're being conservative here and let's just take three quarter of an inch off. Maybe that's too much. Let's start with just 13 inches for this front area. So we want width is the same three eighths as 0.362. 
and length is 13. Let it generate. Back to my transform pattern tool. Right click on that. I want a symmetric pattern with sewing for the other side. Right. My edit pattern tool, it's hotkey Z. Now if I click on this segment, I have to have that little blue number hovering below it to be able to do this. Otherwise I accidentally pressed on one of these. I'm going to hold shift so I can click on the rest of the segments to get this full measurement. So we have 12.81 for the back. So let's try 12 inches, taking off 0.8 inches. So we're going back to our rectangle polygon tool. We're going to left click. The width is going to be the same, 3.62, and the height is going to be 12. Hotkey A for our transform pattern tool. And I'm going to do the same for the other side. Symmetric pattern with sewing by right clicking on it and getting that pop up menu. Now let's attach these so we can superimpose to side with it. Okay, in the back. Now these need to sew together too because the bindings are coming together at the side seam. So I'm going to go from out to in, from outside to inside. And that did it for the other side too. Now we need this bottom edge, so from outside to inside, from outside to inside. So now I'm going to go back to the transform pattern tool, that's hotkey A. I'm going to right click on all four of these pieces by holding shift and then choose superimpose side. Okay, let's simulate so we can tell what that looks like. Not too bad. Okay, let's leave it there for now. Gosh, that is really dark. It almost looks like black. Oh, but this is not sewn. Maybe it's just colliding with the skin. Yeah, okay, we're good. Sorry, lady. It's a little bit intimate. Okay, let's do um, the rest, which is this whole segment right here. And I wonder, obviously it would be a single piece in the real world, even going from all the way here to the other top of the neckline. But for the sake of ease, we might want to break it up into four sections instead of just two sections because this we can superimpose on and then this we can superimpose on. And just for visual representation, we can delete the normal map for that seam in between the two pieces of binding and it, it won't look like anything. And then we just take that measurement to um, with us for real world production, right? And we can always merge the two pieces later if we want to after they're situated. So again, we need to do see what our length is 7.78. Let's go with seven because we have a lot of excess right here that we need to pull in toward the body right there. So let's go with seven for that. Width is 3.362 and then the height is seven. Get my transform pattern tool and right click. Symmetric pattern with sewing. Great, now let's do this guy right here. With my edit pattern tool, it's hotkey Z. We have 12 inches. Um, let's do, it doesn't look too baggy. So let's do, yeah, we might as well go ahead and take a full inch off. So 11 inches width is 0.362, 11 inches. Okay, hotkey A to get our transform pattern tool, right click, symmetric pattern with sewing, and there's our other side. So let's sew this on here, and if it helps, I can 
at my transform pattern tool and sort of situate them how they would be once they're on. Okay, I'm gonna get my free sewing tool and we're just gonna put these on there now. And you see I'm passing up that suggested stopping point because we have ease that we're working in into the binding. Let's go back to our transform pattern tool, hotkey A, and I'm going to select all four of these new binding pieces. I'm going to right click and say superimpose side. I go right to their home. The reason why that's so beneficial to use instead of using arrangement points or just trying to get a gizmo arrangement with it is because those pieces are tiny and also they go right to where they're supposed to go. Um, what did we do here? Did we do the outside? Let's check. Here's my edit sewing tool. Um, is that the correct piece? That is on that side. Let's see what happens when we simulate. Hmm. Okay, maybe it was just having a hard time thinking about it. All right, let's sew these little seams up. Okay, I'm gonna stop simulation by hitting my space bar. I'm gonna grab my uh, free sewing tool. I'm gonna sew these guys up together. And then this is our wearer's left side seam. So top to bottom, top to bottom. And then we have this to this. So where that comes into play is right here. So I'm going to go from bottom to top and bottom to top. Let's simulate to see what happens. Okay, not much. Let's go ahead and decrease the particle distance of the really small pieces at least. So I can go around with my transform pattern tool while I hold shift it will let me make these multiple selections. And then in the property editor, you come down here to where you see under simulation properties, particle distance. I'm gonna take those all the way down to three because they're so tiny. Normally five is like a pretty standard um, high quality particle distance, but you can go lower if your pieces are, are smaller. So that changes things a little bit. We can bring our main body of the suit down to, I'm not going to go to three, of course, but let's go down to like, I don't know, 12 and simulate. Okay. This has more of a curve, but maybe we don't need as much because clearly it's having trouble um, bringing this in. It's gonna create a lot of gathering, which might look really pretty. So maybe before we do that, because I do like that soft curve that uh, to me reads as retro, but let's first try shortening our binding pieces, our elastic binding pieces, and also we could also just add elastic to them. So let's try that for a second. Although it does take more processing power when you do this. So with our transform pattern tool, it's hotkey A, I'm going to open up property editor. And with the elastic property, if you haven't worked with this yet, it is, um, it's really great, but it makes things a lot harder to move quickly in your, in your workflow. So you have the option here, see in the property editor, whatever you have selected, you can select an entire pattern piece and elasticize it, or you can select with the edit pattern tool, you switch over to edit, and you can do just a single side of it, just one segment. I want to do the entire thing because in real life this will be fully um, filled with an elastic piece, a 3 8 um, rubber elastic. The other thing when you turn this elastic on, so if I have this fully selected, 
I'm going to click on elastic. The ratio is default at 80, so we, we could keep that and see what happens because basically what that's saying is we want to make that elastic binding 80% of what its 2D length is. So if this was whatever, 7 inches, I think we made it, 80% of that, which it tells you over here, um, real quick before we simulate, if we wanted to make this pattern piece stay at the 2D dimension that we created it, because it was 7 inches, I think, and we could say, um, I want you to stay exactly 7 inches. I don't care if we sewed you into a 20-inch panel and it stretches you out. No, we want you to stay at at 7 inches, you would just type in 100% ratio. We kept that 80% um, default, so let's see what happens there. Might be a little bit too much because it was pulling down a little bit. But we can also do that elastic property to the other pieces. So definitely on the other side, I would want either elastic applied or I would sh shorten the pattern pieces. So let's put some stretch or elastic, I mean, on these real quick. I'll grab my pattern, transform pattern tool. And I think 80 is going to be too much, so let's do 90. And let's see what happens. Ooh, that's not good right there. I think we need to also make a little internal line in within this binding so it can stitch to the top of this where they intersect with each other. That will sort of keep it a little more stable. So that's definitely too much. Let's see how much they're stretching anyway. So let's turn elastic off and simulate. Okay. Our 2D line length is 40.72. Remember, because we made 20 inch length straps for the top there. And the 3D line length is 45. So even if we put in 100% for the elastic ratio, we would be losing 5 inches. So let's try 100%. Still pulling it up like that, but not too bad. And we're going to need some, at least some, tension there to help keep the suit on, you know. We want to get this really nice balance between keeping the suit on and not being horribly tight and taut everywhere. And let's change these side to 100 as well because 80 seems like a lot because I forgot to take into consideration that these are already being stretched out because we're sewing it to larger pieces. So 80 is pretty hardcore when you think about it. So that looks nice, like it's keeping on the body. It's cupping around the bust, but it's not super tight. Let's try these leg bindings and do a hundred as well. And simulation is already on. And you can see like when the material is doing this, that means that it's not settled and it's colliding with something or itself and it's just not not having it quite. You see how slow that the piece of the binding went back? That's what the elastic property does when you add elastic property to something. It just takes a lot 
more for the program to think about for your device and your processing power to think about um, what the elasticized piece is doing. So we're getting pretty good. We haven't done anything with this piece. Let's keep on this same thing with 100% ratio for the elastic. And we're looking pretty good, although I'm imagining like a little bit lower, maybe right here. Um, but we have to test out what it looks like without all of our collision thickness and skin offset. So before I do that really quick, I'm going to do one little thing. So I'm going to stop simulation and you see where this is coming up to, um, it's sort of like folding over the binding. I want to stitch this outer edge of the binding right here to this back strap. And if we want to apply a stitch like that, if we want to sew an edge to that, we need an internal line because it's in the center of a pattern piece. So I'm going to grab the internal line tool. And that means that we are right down here. And to be right where that wants to be, remember the thickness of the binding is 0.362. So that's where we want our line to be. Oops. 0.362. Perfect. I'm going to go straight across. And there's our internal line. And now we need to know where this is. You see that blue dot in the 3D window while I have my simulation on? It's really great because it shows you in the 2D window where that position is on your pattern. So now I know where to start sewing from. I can grab my free sewing tool and even when you have your sewing tool, see in the 3D window, it sort of gives you where you are, where your position is. Let's do this opposite way so we have it perfect because I need that exact length. I'm going to go from here, nope, from here to here, and then I'm going to go from here to here. All right. Yeah, there we go. It's still pulling a good amount, but let's do one last thing. I feel like I want to turn this elastic off real quick. Because it's too tight right there, I don't like it. And let's simulate. That's better. And let's turn on our high res garment. So I'm going to stop simulation, and this will definitely make everything move a lot slower but because we don't have a lot a lot of pattern pieces and this isn't really complicated we sh it shouldn't be too bad we do have a lot of elastic applied though and i'm working on a mac so it's not the ideal situation for chloe you would like to have a a pc with an nvidia um, gpu but what you gonna do okay so our high res is right here a high res garment and if you long hold on that you'll you'll get the low res garment as well so if you need to return back to the low res where everything's 20 pd um, so you can continue working you don't want to work in this setup it's not good uh, it takes way too much time and there's no need this is just to see um, get a better idea of how it's actually fitting and do you want to do this right before you do your final render for an image. So it, it takes us down to five for particle distance. The skin offset of the avatar is gone and additional thickness collision is down to 1.0. Normally is 2.5 or 3 millimeters so press OK and hit the space bar to simulate and see how everything is different. I mean, it definitely is a more accurate 
fitting. I'm curious how accurate it actually is. That's why I'm going to be doing these tests. But I like the fit of this. I feel like I want this to go a little tiny bit lower. One last thing, and this isn't really for fit, but it does help with final render and how to get a photorealistic image. I'm going to select all these little bits because I know that this is going to be a fold over edge um, or a fold over binding, so there, there will be essentially two layers. While those are all selected, I can come down, not the additional thickness collision, remember that's your barrier for between other pattern pieces and between the avatar, so it's like a little invisible barrier. We want additional thickness render, and what this does is it, is it makes any pattern piece have actual thickness to it. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put two millimeters in here and hit enter. Now to be able to see this, you have to have this thick textured, um, texture view selected, not the textured surface, but thick textured surface. And now you can see they have a little bit of thickness to them and let's hit simulate. And maybe we would want like 2.5. So there's a little bit of thickness, that's a good area to see. So that's 2.5. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. I'm going to make some tiny little tweaks on this to edit this little bit and then I'm going to do a final render. So I hope that this helps. If you're trying to design a swimwear piece for yourself or just for your brand or another person that you know, know that you can have a really good looking image and fabric, first of all, is everything when you're trying to get an accurate representation and simulation for what you expect the, the real world product to look like when you finish producing it. All right. So um, I'll fast forward through this next part, but I hope you learned a little bit of something and thanks for watching.